you just go, that's great. There, uh, Scotty, what did the man say? We were having a pint of beer and some guy came up to me and you stood by me. It was 1986. You were playing the title role in Pericles. You had just finished playing it. You were down having a, a, a beer with me and a guy came up to you and said, Gare, I just saw you in Pericles. How you doing? <laughs> that's right. <laughs> Welcome, I'm Garrett Davies, and I'm in good company with Shauna McKenna and Scotty Wentworth. You guys have worked together a lot. You've been one of the greatest kind of uh, pairings, certainly at the festival and obviously at the Grand and other, other theaters in Canada. How does that inform when you guys get together to do a project? How does that inform your history together, your shorthand, I would think? Well, it makes it easier. I mean, you, you've already, you've known each other for so long. I mean, Scott and I met in 85. We've known each other that long. So every time you did a show together, it was just um, adding to your story. And, and we like working together. You learn how to work with each other and you learn how to play together and have fun together and um, right. improvise together on occasion. <laughs> It's one of the great things about any acting company to be able to to draw on longer experiences. You get a jump ahead. You know, when we did Long Day's Journey into Night, that mm -hmm. couple in that play was married and together as long as we've known each other. So, you know, we, we didn't have to make up a whole lot of stuff. You know, I knew about uh, Shauna's drug habit. She knew about my alcoholism. <laughs> so it was... <laughs> You've also worked with each other's spouses. I mean, Miles directed The Long Day's Journey in Tonight, and Marion's been in, in stuff I know with, oh, yeah. with you yeah. as well. And, and Scotty, you've directed Marion in plays as well. I acted with Miles when we did, uh, and Marion, uh, all four of us acted together in, in Antony and Cleopatra in Montreal. It's more like a Neil Simon uh, play, <laughs> you guys, really. Uh, <laughs> I thought, in the I thought living room. I thought you meant the production of Anthony and Cleopatra, and it, it sort of was, uh, more like a new assignment. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Well, okay, so so uh, working with your partners, how is that? How do you find that? How, is, is that, again, even more of a, of a uh, developed shorthand, uh, or, or are there, are there um, trip wires that happen because there is so much uh, of a relationship going on through home and everything else and children rearing kids and stuff. Does that make it so much more rich, richer or does it sometimes cramp your style? I, you know, it, I think it depends on, on the relationship. Marion and I have always collaborated on, uh, on projects. We've written plays together. We've acted together. We've, we've acted in plays we've written. Uh, I've directed her. If that, is part of, of, of the dynamic of any relationship, in this case, obviously a marriage, then it's just one more thing you do together, like cooking or raising a kid, whatever it is. I know uh, a lot of couples don't, don't have that uh, uh, as part of their relationship, and that's fine and healthy too, but it's always been a part of ours, so I, I kind of don't know any, any, any different. We have always found it very rewarding to collaborate. Shana, you've worked so much with Miles. I met him when he was directing me. So we started out at Blythe and uh, we, we've done so many shows together. It, like Scott Marion, uh, we were always working partners as well as life partners. We used to say, oh, it's easy working together. The hard part is living together. <laughs> right, right. It's the rest of it. <laughs> I think the hardest part for me is watching uh, a room if it gets difficult with my husband because I feel my, my, uh, my, my wife lion come out, you know, right. and so to go oh step back that's he's capable he'll he'll do his bit that's um, right we, we want to protect naturally protect mm -hmm. each other right yeah. yeah but you know it's it's not your process it's his and the actors he's working with but i love working with him because it does feel as scott was saying like a collaboration true collaboration you know you 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 offer what you have he offers what he has and you find solutions together well, I was lucky enough to be in a show that Miles directed, you and I were doing, uh, The Physicists, and that ended up to be completely, you know, one of those processes where you're reading the play, you're not really sure, and blah, blah, and it ends up kind of, you go, how did this become so great? But it was one of those happy uh, instances in the theater, which is kind of great. Yeah. You guys have played the same parts as uh, Richard III, 
I only did it twice. I was covering call. and uh, I, But you still did it. I still did it. And uh, yes, I had to, f with very little rehearsal, had to had to fight you. In, oh, in a, my God. In a, filled with fog. Oh. And I thought, I have no idea where he is. My crown was slipping down over my head because it didn't quite it fit. It was hysterical. <laughs> and, and it was slow. It went into slow motion, which might be one of the most difficult things to do, a fight in slow motion, particularly to a student matinee, where they are laughing uproariously at how idiotic you <laughs> Anyhow, not you. I believe my entire understudy performance was in slow motion, so, you know, that <laughs> <laughs> made it easier. We've all been doing this well over 40 years. What, what turns the engine still? Um, uh, or, or has it slowed down? Or has it increased? Uh, you know, after 40 odd years of, of playing? I think more and more it's less um, role appetite than project appetite. You're excited by the people you're going to work with or um, the actual project itself. Rather, I think when you're young, you, you want, oh, I want to play that role, I want to play that role, da, da, da. And I think I get really excited by the assembly of uh, artists that are brought together. Uh, I think that keeps uh, me really excited. And Scotty? Uh, definitely the, the people that I work with, um, you know, I've been dying to work with, with Tom Rooney again, you know, he was obviously in the Hamlet that we did together, but of course, Claudius doesn't have really any scenes with Horatio. So I never really got to work, you know, he head on with, with, uh, with Mr. Rooney. Uh, and I've admired him so much in all the stuff I've seen him do. And I was so thrilled that he was going to be in the All's Well doing Pro. Oh, okay. and, and we had a great time in the eight days that were allotted to us. You know, that's the perfect amount of time to spend with Tom. <laughs> <laughs> eight, so, eight, eight, eight days. I find after eight. It's all good. It's all good. <laughs> yeah, it's a win-win. But, you know, you, you spend your life tackling these these great plays, particularly the the, the plays by Shakespeare. They continue to to to... to turn my crank I, I even plays I think I'm not interested in because I've just done it or I've seen too many productions of it you know I start reading one of those plays and I'm like this is great you know this is great stuff it continues to speak to me and in times of upheaval or or discombobulation Shakespeare is wonderful to go back to I remember teaching a class in San Francisco after um the last election and um there were a lot of um devastated students, I think. And um, I said, now's the time to do Shakespeare. And when they spoke those words, I said, just do it. And they understood stakes. You know, we talk about stakes, what's important. Mm -hmm. It's not casual. Shakespeare isn't casual. There's a lot at stake. The poetry alone is solace. It captures things we can articulate with great economy, the great ones anyways. Well, it's funny because one of the things that I've been doing in the last six weeks is going on to the Shakespeare app in my phone whenever I'm doing something, uh, you know, with whatever with a little time on my hands. And I just go and just review a few things. And it's just, it's kind of extraordinary. Mm -hmm. And even the Troilus's or the plays, which I can't really seem to get into usually, now I, I'm seeing... I'm seeing the beauty of it. If every time you do a play, like I, I really believe that, you know, people say, well, what's the relevance of Shakespeare? And I go, well, you know, every play you do is contemporary when you're doing a play because the people in the audience are living right now. You're acting right now. You've read the same headlines. You're in the same city or the same town. Now, when you hear, when we go back after this, and I believe we will, when we hear the words plague, infectious, scourge, mm -hmm. they're going to have different relevances to it you know, for us. When we did Orpheus Descending years ago, we were doing it when the levees broke mm -hmm. in uh, New Orleans. And um, when we said levees and broke, there was this frisson throughout the theater because it's, people are hearing it right now. So mm -hmm. they've got today's headlines and their world in their head as they're watching a play. They bring their story with them. I want to ask you guys about uh, Macbeth. Of all of the big... Shakespeare parts that I've been privileged to play. I will say Macbeth kicked my ass more than any of, of, of the other ones. It, it, it affected my mood. It got into my dream life. Um, every night I'd walk off the stage uh, just exhausted, uh, uh, sit in my dressing room and go, well, I failed again. 
you know, mm. I'd again, two more days from now or whenever it came back up in the rep. Uh, it's, it is a brutal, it takes a, it, it took a brutal toll on me. It's a gorgeous play, but it is a brutal play in its examination of those places in the psyche that we don't necessarily always want to go. Strangely in Macbeth, uh, uh, you, you have one of the few functioning marriages that you find mm. in, uh, mm. in, in Shakespeare. And, 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 you know, halfway through the play when he starts to go on his own and, and doesn't need her, want her, whatever, whatever that is with him anymore, um, is, uh, it's a, it, it was devastating. And that was, that was a great surprise. Uh, to discover in the play that that mm. that aloneness um he's he's probably the most alone character i've ever encountered uh, how does that then uh, tie uh, tie in with richard the third there is an energy in that character um mm -hmm. and and if not a downright glee uh, 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 there is there is an energy there is a forward motion uh, the way he talks to the audience can you believe what just happened? Let's mm -hmm. see if I can do this. There's an energy there. Whereas when, you know, when Macbeth talks to the audience, it's it's like he, the sensation I always felt was like he's opening up his skull and going, get this stuff out of me. <laughs> well, he starts with doubt, whereas Richard III has no self-doubt, right? <laughs> so they come from the different thing. When I played Richard, I got pneumonia and uh, found it to be the most difficult thing uh, I've ever played. Was that just because of the, 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 the size of it? I mean, you know... Uh, no, I think... We played, I think we, played, uh, we played Anthony and Cleopatra with pneumonia. I had pneumonia. Yeah. All throughout Did the you? World. Yeah. Yes, oh, I played Cleopatra with pneumonia, yeah. and it was, uh, it was exhausting in Montreal. I think that's a good choice, though, Shauna. It's a very good choice. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I was, I was the Brenda Vaccaro. Yeah. Oh God! Yeah, we were both. Uh, sick. I used to love, you know, you know, because you, you, you've played it. You know, I used to love leaving the stage at the beginning of Act Five and going, "Take it, Shauna." Yes, I, there, was no, there was no sword fight. I got to, you know, I took a shower. I sat in my dressing room. I got to walk onto the curtain call all refreshed, and she'd been out there. You know, that's right. Yeah, it's a bit like me on Julia. Julia, sort of the fifth act is kind of hers, right? It's all her family trauma. Um, you know, and. I've never played Macbeth, but uh, <laughs> I, it, with the Macbeth, Soon. Um, the one, yeah, no, <laughs> um, the, the the one that Scott and I did, that was the third Macbeth I'd been in. And it was also the summer of um, the Hamolka Bernardo Teal murders. Oh, okay, yeah. Remember that? And it was kind, it was horrific because. Oh, uh, yes. I, I, at one point I, I thought of, I should be a blonde. I really did. I thought maybe I should be. Um, because the two of them are so much stronger together. And when they're separated, they're less than. And they probably mm. couldn't do what they did by themselves. Oh, yeah. Because this man was on his way to, he was, he was the golden guy. And um, with her urging and her expectations, because her imagination said, it'll be fine, just wash your hands, we'll be done, just do it. It's, it's easy street from here on in. And of course, then what she's done is she's put that thought of, the sight of Duncan way back in the head. And it only comes out to haunt her later. And how do you enjoy revisiting a role once you've done it before? I love it because you, you feel, oh, I survived once. Okay, <laughs> let's, push, let's, let's push the envelope, uh, the envelope a little further. Let's go further with that choice. Let's, uh, you know, or, and also you're working sometimes, most of the time with a whole different cast or a director. Mm -hmm. So you find different things and you've changed. You're doing it years later or something and the world has changed. So mm -hmm. I, I really like it, the exploration of uh, a role again. Oh, again. And Scotty, have you done? Yeah, I like it too. I mean, I've, I've played Gloucester twice now. I've played Benedict twice. You know, it's, it's, it's becoming rarer and rarer. And I think that's, that's kind of too bad because, you know, you look at that generation that, that, of, of kind of giants that, that, that came before us, you know, in, in England with, you know, Olivier and, and, and Gilgood. I mean, Gilgood played five major hamlets before he retired that role. You know, that's, that's, a, that's a lifetime of experience that you just can't get with one production. We don't have that same kind of luxury that uh, uh, that generation had. And, and in a way it's, 
it's kind of too bad, you know. Yeah. I mean, it would be nice to kind of open that up a bit, and perhaps you know that will that will happen as as we're rethinking a lot of uh, aspects of casting. Play is changed by by the age of those characters, and that changes mm-hmm. the dynamics. I played Mackers twice: once on television, once on a film, and they were both comedies. So I'm not sure. <laughs> I've, I have not. I have not felt the uh, aloneness, Scott. <laughs> that you're talking about. <laughs> I mean, some of the, the jokes fell flat. That was lonely. Yeah, um, but you didn't get a laugh on "It Was a Rough Night." <laughs> oh, I don't. I, I, I'm sure I you probably, did. I probably uh, uh, um, also uh, kind of paraphrased it. So you know. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so no. So sure. What about uh, the cost of doing these roles now? Uh, when we are in our 60s or, or sorry, 40s. Did I say that's when we're in our 40s? I'm a 60. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, how, what, how do you feel about the cost of doing these roles? I'm finding it more difficult because I want I want to leave it all out there and I want to go for it. And it's just, some of these roles were written for young people. You know, even last year in Private Lives with Lucy, roles are written for a 30 year old and you're 60 and it's just harder to do because you don't have the 30 year olds mm-hmm. set of. Well, but I, you know, I think that's part of the interest as you age, certain roles don't interest you anymore because mm-hmm. they are a 30 year old mentality or they are, uh, you know, a, a, a certain um, energy level or, or, and, and you, I found that even as a very young actor, I didn't want to play ingenues after, after a certain point because they didn't interest me as much. Mm-hmm. Um, I had long passed that stage, but, but for example, with long day's journey into night that we did that, I, that cost it, but that was the play. I would time comes off stage sometimes and just after the first act and just start to shake or cry. And it was because I felt such compassion for that family. I felt mm-hmm. so bad for them all. And because they were real, they had lived. After 40 years, you know, you're not as anxious to prove yourself. It's more about the experience. It's more about what play is it? Who, who am I going to be doing it with? Um, and that part of the ego is taken out of the question. And, and, and then you, 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 can, you can be more open. You can be more open with it, um, is what I found, particularly with, with the O'Neill. You both teach, but uh, Shauna, you teach a lot. What do you want them to know? I think that young people in the theater, particularly now, need to do two things, and they, they, they may seem contradictory. I think they have to really educate themselves about the past and how we got to where we are in, in, in the theater at the moment. I feel like uh, that that's something that in, in recent times has kind of been um, perhaps neglected or, 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 or undervalued. And the second part, I would encourage them all to question everything. All of the assumptions that, that, that we make about not just what makes good theater or bad theater, but what makes theater. But you see, they both work together because you can't really question something without understanding how you got there. And then once you have, uh, I think it's the young that have the courage to go, why do we do it this way? Everybody agrees that this isn't the best way to do it, but 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 this is the way we have kind of accepted it. Let's 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 brainstorm. Let's think of of of, of new ways to 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 do it. You need to find out the reason why you want to do this and to acknowledge it. If there's more pain than pleasure, you're free to leave. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, I think you know. I, I I was always ready if it got too much or something. I, I would. I'd find something else. It's, but it's always been quite pleasurable or it was worth it. It was worth it. I also think that young actors have to listen to their responses to theater. What do I like? What do I not like? And that will, that will determine your own aesthetic and, and you will eventually end up doing the theater you want to do because you know, sometimes what you don't like, what you don't respond to. I think it's so subjective. And I think the other thing is, accept that it's a subjective art. It's almost like having, be a florist who acts, be a barber who acts, <laughs> you know, always have, have the thing as well. And then, then you can only, then you act because that's what you have to do. Like, for example, you took last year away from the festival. I think, and I took the year before, and Scotty, you've done the same. 
I think it's one of the healthiest things you can do for your inner florist, your inner barber. It's the most important thing is to find that uh, Shauna time, that Scott time, that Gare time. I do think, you know, the one thing I do say to, to kids in the theater is uh, you have to have a life as well, because otherwise you have nothing to bring. You have, you, you don't, you, you don't have a well to draw from. And it, and if the theater becomes your own, your everything, your everything, you, you're going to lose perspective because people are going to be cruel and people are going to say things about you and you're going to feel like you, you can't do it and you're worth nothing as an actor. It happens to everybody. Mm. Especially if you read the papers or or <laughs> online reviews. If you're in Costa Rica or wherever, they you don't talk to that person about your choice in playing uh, Lady M or Mackers. You talk to them about Ned or Cal or Miles or Marion or whatever. It's your life that you're talking about. You don't normally get into the 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 resume. And uh, you sometimes forget it, but then when you come back, uh, that's what it is. But it's so much, it's so freeing to be in uh, in the company of people who don't read those reviews or whatever, you know, because we are, I mean, what makes Shauna and Scott so great is not only their performances, it's done an excellent job as being people. So that's pretty fantastic. I do think also the older that you get, the 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 less the, the more life you have, and 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 you know when I was younger, I probably spent more time talking about the work among my peer group and my and my friends than I perhaps do now, um, because there are there are other things to, uh, to talk about. Having a long life in the theater is is interesting because you know you you. You change and yet you stay the same. Um, uh, the same things still move me that used to move me, but there are other things that I didn't know about when 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 I came here to do the glass menagerie. I wasn't married. I I wasn't a father. Uh, I hadn't lived uh, that intervening thirty five years. Mm -hmm. Life mm -hmm. gathers around us, and and I think that that what we look to the young people to bring into the theater is that new information, and what we and what we look to to the to the the veterans for is that accumulation of life. Uh, and, and hopefully the two of them together form that elusive group called a theater company. Well, that's one thing about us then, you know, if we talk about the kids um, needing history and stuff, we also have to keep our drawbridges down so that we can receive new information right. and not become just ensconced back in, uh, in, in, in the day, you know, to exactly. keep it open. Mm -hmm. uh, it's just it's interesting as people, my dad married Scott and Marion. That's right. And that's right. you just go, that's great. There, uh, Scotty, what did the man say? We were having a pint of beer at Bentley's, I believe it was, and some guy came up to me, and you stood by me. It was early days. What, it was a really bizarre... It was 1986. You were playing the title role in Pericles, uh, a play that I've directed, a very difficult play a bit of a mess even by Elizabethan standards. And and you had just finished playing it. You were down having a, a, a beer with me and a guy came up to you and said, Gare, I just saw you in Pericles. How you doing? <laughs> That's right. <laughs> yeah. That, you, do, you don't need papers, Jonna, or, or, or online reviews. Yeah. You've got people in, in, in that when you're having a pint of beer. Is there anything you'd like to say to our, our uh, viewing audience? It's an honor to talk to you guys, uh, uh, albeit over the, uh, the computer. We miss you. We can't wait for you to come back. It's lovely to speak to you all, even online. And um, I hope you're enjoying the series. And I look forward to seeing you in person. Oh. On mass. Well, on mass. Well, guys, Shauna and Scott, thank you so much for joining me. Uh, indeed, uh, it is good company. So thank you very, very much. And love to both of you. You too. Thanks, Dare. <laughs>